section 3.2, solving inequalities using addition and subtraction. Our goal is to use these two operations to solve inequalities. So to begin, we're going to define what equivalent inequalities are, and those are inequalities that have the same solutions or answers. So make sure you uh, fill in those blanks. They have the same solutions. We're going to first be focusing on addition, and this is actually very similar to what we've done with equations. You just add the same thing to both sides. So in this first example, we have x minus 15 is greater than negative 12. We're going to add 15 to both sides, and the reason why is because we're isolating the x, getting it by itself. And so we have x on the left, and then we have to combine negative 12 plus 15. Another way to think about that is 15 minus 12, and that's 3. Now, how do we graph this? Well, first of all, we see that there's no line underneath, so it's going to be an open circle. That means we're not including the endpoint of 3. Put an open circle on the 3. And remember the shortcut that I taught you last section, that symbol right there points towards where you're shading. So it's pointing towards the right. Now, if you don't cannot remember that short, shortcut method, Another way to think about it is what numbers are bigger than 3? 4 and 5 or 1 and 2? And obviously 4 and 5 are bigger than 3. So this is the graph of the solution x greater than 3. We're going to be using the addition property again, but this time I'm also going to show you how to check your answers. So we want to get the x by itself, so we add 3 to both sides. And we get 13 on the left. Now remember the shortcut that I showed you, the variable has to be on the left side. So we're going to rewrite this. x is less than or equal to 13. It's the exact same thing as 13 greater than or equal to x, just written a different way. So now let's put a circle on the 13. Is it open or closed? It's closed because of the or equal to line underneath. And we're shading towards the left because those are the numbers that are less than 13. Now you don't have to go the whole way, you can just draw an arrow like this. Now we need to learn how to do the checking process. First of all, we're going to check the endpoint. The endpoint is 13. So let's plug 13 in for the equation. Now I'm taking the inequality from above and just putting an equal sign in the instead of a greater than or equal to. Plugging in the 13, which is the endpoint, what's 13 minus 3? 10. So it works. Endpoint is correct. Now let's check the symbol. That less than or equal to symbol, we need to choose a number that's smaller than 13. So how about let's choose 12? And we're using the inequality from above. Is 10 greater than or equal to 9? And yes. So the symbol works, the endpoint works, and we're all good to go to the next problem. This is correct. Okay, subtraction. It's the same thing as addition except obviously a different operation, but the same rule applies. If you subtract one number from one side of the inequality, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So flip your note sheet over, and we're going to try the two examples that use this property. In example three, we have t plus six is greater than negative four. In order to get the t by itself, we're gonna subtract six from both sides. t greater than negative 10. Go to your graph below and put an open circle on the negative 10 and we're shading towards the right. And I believe that's it. The solutions of t greater than negative 10 are all real numbers bigger than negative 10, which means to the right of that negative 10 on the graph. So the numbers that are bigger than negative 10 are the negative numbers that are, that are less negative and also the positive numbers. And on to the last example. This is an application problem. The hard drive on your computer has a capacity of 120 gigabytes. You have already used 85 gigabytes. 
you want to save some home videos to your hard drive, what are the possible sizes of the home video collection you can save? First of all, we need to define our variable. And remember, the question at the very end is always talking about what we need to solve for. So they're, we're looking for the home videos. So V is going to be the size of home video collection. Okay, make sure you define your variable like that. And now let's draw a little model to summarize this. Current space used plus, because we're combining, plus size of home videos. is at most hard drive capacity. Now the reason why we put is at most is because capacity means you cannot go over whatever that number is. So that's what it means. We cannot go over it. It just won't work. Your computer only has a certain size of space, and we cannot go over that capacity. So now let's fill in our givens. We already know that we use 85, so that's going right here. Plus means addition. Size of home videos, we do not know. That's the V. Is at most less than or equal to, because it cannot go over the capacity, so it has to be less than or equal to the capacity, and the capacity is 120. So there's our inequality right there. There's only one step to solving it. We're going to subtract the 85 because it's positive originally. V is less than or equal to 35. So our conclusion sentence is that the home video collection can be any size less than or equal to 35 gigabytes. Make sure you jot down that conclusion sentence. In section 3.3, today we're going to be using multiplication and division to solve inequalities. So that, those are your first two blanks on this note sheet, multiplication and division. Yesterday we used addition and subtraction, and today we're using the next two operations. And the same rule applies. If we multiply one number to one side, you would do the exact same thing to the other. Now, it's a little bit different than adding and subtracting because when you multiply or divide each side by a negative number, you're changing the meaning of the inequality. And in order to compensate for this, we need to reverse the inequality symbol in order to make the inequality true. So an example of this would be y over negative 4 is greater than 2. And what we're going to do to get rid of that negative 4 in the bottom, we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4. And when you do that, these go away, why? The symbol has to switch, and you'll get a negative 8. So that's how it works. Okay, example 1. This is not involving multiplication of a division, uh, multiplication of a negative, sorry about that. Um, but you will see that in a moment. x over 3 is less than negative 2. In order to get the x by itself, we need to multiply both sides by 3, because you have to do the opposite of dividing by 3. The threes go away, x is less than negative six. Now you may be thinking, oh, I see a negative over there. Well, we're not multiplying or dividing by the negative. The, that negative two is just hanging out on the right side. We're not multiplying or dividing that negative two to the other side. So that's why we didn't flip the symbol. Now we go to the graph below. We have an open circle on the negative six and we shade towards the left because those are the, those are the numbers that are smaller than negative six. Also remember the little trick that less than symbol points towards the left. Okay, example two. This time we do have a negative involved. This is the original. In order to get the W by itself, aka isolating the W, we need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, or the flip, of negative three-fourths. And the reciprocal, or the flip, of negative three-fourths is negative four-thirds. So that's what we're going to do now and keep the symbol in the middle. Don't write it there yet. 
multiply both sides by negative four thirds. Technically that three over there is over one, so we write that to help us out. And now let's see what happens. Oh, by the way, the symbol in the middle flips. So now we have a less than or equal to. That always happens when you multiply or divide by a negative number and that's what happened. So on the left side, the, the negatives go away. Remember, two negatives multiply gives you a positive. Now look, uh, the fours go away and the threes go away. So the W is by itself. Now on the right side, the threes go away. Three divided by three is one. And negative four over one is just negative four. So there's our answer. And let's graph it and then we'll check. So close circle on the negative four because it's including the endpoint. That line underneath the symbol means including. We're shading towards the left. Those are the numbers that are smaller than negative four. Now I'll show you the checking process. We need to check the endpoint and then we'll check the symbol, the inequality symbol. So first of all, let's rewrite this. We're using an equation for a second and we're checking the endpoint of negative four. So negative four is going in for the W and it's technically over one. The negatives go away, the fours go away, and we just have a positive three. Does three equal three? Yes, so endpoint is correct. Now let's check the symbol. Rewrite, check. Rewrite the inequality. And now, what kind of number do we have to plug in for the W this time? Any number that is smaller than negative four. And because it's a fraction, that negative three-fourths, I would choose a number that goes well with four. And the smallest, the, the number that goes well with four, that's smaller than negative four, is negative eight. So I'm plugging in a negative eight. It doesn't have to be that way, but I'm trying to get rid of the, the fractions, and I know you would prefer that. Negative eight's going in over one. Question mark three. The negatives cancel. Uh, the 4 goes away, and the t 8 becomes a 2, and now we have 3 times 2, that's 6. Is 6 greater than or equal to 3? Yes. So it works. And that's it for that problem. Okay, now we're going to move on to division, but the good news for you is that when we solve inequalities using division, it is similar to solving inequalities using multiplication. So the same rule of flipping the symbol applies. If you divide each side by, of an inequality by a negative number, you need to reverse the symbol, the direction of the symbol, in order to um, allow for that negative number going to both sides. So remember, you reverse the direction of the symbol, and I normally just call it flipping the symbol, so it's going the opposite direction. Okay, example three on the back. This is about walking dogs. You walk dogs in your neighborhood after school. You earn $4.50 per dog. How many dogs do you need to walk to earn at least $75? So now let's underline the givens. $4.50 per dog, and you want to earn at least $75. And the question is at how many dogs? So how about we say let D equal number of dogs. And there isn't a ton of space on your note sheet, so make sure you write small. Now, we need to set up an inequality that represents this situation. So let's do cost per dog times the number of dogs is at least money it wanted. Now let's fill in the givens. We know that the cost per dog is 450. Times means multiplication. Um, D is the number of dogs. Is at least is greater than or equal to because is at least means you want to have at least this amount or more than that amount. And 75 is the dollar amount. So the least amount of money that you want is 75. You don't want to go below that. So that's what that means. Now, in order to get the 
D by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 450. D is greater than or equal to 16.67. Now take a look at that. Does that make sense for your answer? Can you walk 16.67 dogs? I don't think so. The number of dogs must be a whole number. So we're going to round up to 17. So round up. And we're going to write um, you need to walk at least 17 dogs in order to make your $75 or more. And last problem, what are the solutions of negative 9y is greater than or equal to 63? In order to get the y by itself, we're going to divide both sides by negative 9, leave space for the symbol, divide by negative 9 on both sides, uh-oh, a multiplication uh, or division, actually, of a negative number it means we're flipping or reversing the symbol. And now the y is by itself. And what is 63 divided by negative 9? Negative 7. So there's our answer. Let's graph that real quick. Uh, close circle on the negative 7 because of that including line at the bottom right there. And we're shading towards the right because those are the numbers that are bigger than negative 7. Okay, that completes this lesson. You can try the lesson check right now or wait until we do problems similar together during class.